Yeah, Taskin for 31 years has been a bellboy at a Turkish hotel. 31 years. There's this guy that always goes on vacation there every year from the U.S. His name is Charles. Charles recently passed away. And then Taskin learned through a lawyer that Charles left him some money, a part of his estate. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. We have no idea how much. But it turned out that Taskin does not need to work for the rest of his life. So it was like more than a hundred bucks. bucks. (laughs) Yeah, more than a hundred dollars. Here's the thing. Taskin and Charles became friends. I mean, because Charles went there every single year. And so he was his bellboy a lot of the times. And they struck up this friendship and they became good buds. And Charles always looked forward to seeing Taskin at that hotel as a bellboy. Now, it was such a great friendship that Charles left him a good amount of his inheritance. That's just, wow. that's amazing to me. And it's certainly, and it's like, certainly unexpected. like unexpected. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's not, why, Taskin it's not why Taskin was nice to Charles, nice to Charles you, know, you know, and, and, there, were and no there were no underlying issues, issues you know, trying to get some, some money or, or, try, or to try to work something, something out. out. They, they were just friends, friends for all those years. years. Yeah, and then you never know what that friendship means to somebody. And to Charles, mm-hmm. it meant a whole lot. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Yeah, there's a couple from Texas, and they were super excited. They'd been waiting for this day. You know, possibly they had been in prayer about this day, and they decided when they found out the news that they were going to be empty nesters. They were going to celebrate <laughs> with pictures. Yeah, you can see this. You may have seen this already, but it is hilarious. They're outside. They're holding a sign just like it's the first day of school or you're showing that you're expecting your first baby and on the sign it just says expecting zero kids due date august 2021 20, b <laughs> photography shot this and they put it all over the the social media and it's it's the funniest thing to see It is hilarious. It's like a maternity shoot, which I know a lot of couples are doing these days. Um, And it's, it's exactly like that where you have different poses and, you know, peering into each other's eyes as you're so looking forward to the next step of your life. And they're like, we are done. (laughs) Their kids are out of high school and out of the house. Now, I don't know how they were able to celebrate like that, because honestly, when my kids started going to college, I was crushed. I'm like, Oh my, I was like sad. I wasn't celebrating. No, and especially when your youngest goes off to college, you're like, oh. but maybe Don't they talk have about like that now. I know. I still have one left. <laughs> maybe they had like six kids and they were just done. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. So it's kind of ironic right now that the FTC or the Federal Trade Commission is now investigating said McDonald's ice cream machines. Yeah, they're trying to figure out, okay, so what's going on? Because evidently, and there's even an app. I don't know what the app is called, but I know that there is an app where you can go on and you can see if the McDonald's near you has their ice cream machine up and running. So, like, it's kind of a thing. And so the Federal Trade Commission wants to see, you know, is it with the supplier? Is it with who is taking care of the ice cream machines or where the issue is? I've never had that happen, although... I will have to admit, I haven't been to a McDonald's, but maybe a handful of times in the past 10 years. Now, before that, it was all the time. I was a really big guy, but but I've never had anybody ever tell me the ice cream machine is down. Well, no, I'm on the flip side of that. And I'm not saying it's all the time because it's not. But I mean, every now and then, and it seems like it's always when you are just craving that ice cream or that Sunday or whatever milkshake, and it's you know, a long line and you sit in the line for a while and then they tell you that and your dreams are crushed. Yeah. Well, it's and not knock a McDonald's. I no. mean, it's going to happen, you know, sure. and if it happens to one, it happens to a lot because it's the same ice cream machine, right? Yeah. Okay, you need to know this about Liz Riles. Huh? She orders. What is it you order <laughs> without the, without the meat? Is it the no. meat? She's what is it? No, no. I order a kid's meal. Because that's all no, the food. Don't you that... order a breakfast something like without the egg? Oh, oh yes, I do order an um, egg McMuffin, no egg. Did you hear that? Liz <laughs> orders an egg McMuffin with no egg. Why? I just I don't get it. Like I I just don't like that egg in particular. I like eggs. I like scrambled eggs. I like, but I just like to get the I think it's Canadian bacon and cheese. 
and and an egg McMuffin. It's a little healthier for me. So what do they say when you ask for it like that? Well, the McDonald's that we always hit on our way to church knows us. And so we'll we'll pull up and hey, we'd oh, like a yeah, an it's egg that Mc- lady again. <laughs> they just say, Oh, no eggs? Robin Liz, his morning crew. Yeah, there was a guy, a swimmer, and he wanted to take off. He wanted to take a real nice swim. And I think he bit off more than he could chew because where he tried to swim, this is uh, in the uh, British Isles, he tried to swim five miles. So that's a long way. Okay. Anyway, for anybody, even a strong swimmer. So anyway, he got kind of caught up out in the water and also got lost uh, on his way to, to where he was headed. Well, <laughs> the, there were lifeguards and lifeboats and rescuers that were that were looking for this guy. And so one of the rescuers is the Royal National Lifeboat Institution. They've saved like 200,000 lives since they were formed. They're out there. They've got their boat out in the water looking for this guy. They see a pod of dolphin. Then in the middle of the pod of dolphin, they see this swimmer. The dolphin were kind of helping the guy along. I don't know if they were coming up under him to, you know, buoy him up a little bit. I don't know if they were protecting him from sea creatures or what, but that is the only reason that the rescuers found this guy. It's because of the dolphin. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. They call him Flipper. Flipper came to the rescue. <laughs> How great is that? <laughs> no one yeah. He's smarter than he. I Don't love they're smart. They're smart and they care. They really do. There, there are so many stories of dolphins saving and helping people in this manner. Yeah. And maybe, maybe they've been inspired by the show Flipper. Maybe. Thank you, Flipper, for coming to the rescue. <laughs> Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Football. Not American football, but the English Premier League. We're talking soccer. We're talking Manchester. When you go to a soccer game, they make you eat the coffee cups. Uh, Are they made out of paper? (laughs) Because I hope not. They make you eat the coffee cups. It's like you have coffee here. You have tea here. You eat your cup. Don't throw it away. The cups are edible. Oh, good. They did make them so you could literally eat the cup. Oh, good. And, you know, that's a thing now. That's like a a cooking, baking trend is to put, like, hot chocolate inside these little cups. So maybe they're ahead of the trend. They're setting the trend. So you can eat it. So there's, like, 55,000 that could go to a game (gasps) at a time. So they make sure that they have at least 55,000 edible cups for the coffee and the tea because there's too much trash, they say. There's too much trash, and they're trying to, you know, alleviate how much trash there is. And so they thought, eh, let's eat the coffee cups. You know what's next? They're going to make those soup bread bowls and serve soup at soccer games. That'd be oh, awesome. That'd be nice. Robin Liz, his morning crew. Evidently, they're making footballs at Krispy Kreme. That's good only through the Labor Day weekend. It's like a, it's like a, a very small, limited supply kind of thing. Yeah. Well, isn't this the uh, kickoff to college football this weekend? So I guess oh, that's sure. Yeah, that's what it's. I know Clemson and Georgia are playing in North Carolina um, tomorrow night. So maybe that's what it's all about. But yeah, you can only get the football donuts for a very short amount of time. And they look delicious. They look delicious. Yeah. Yeah. I can't have them. They're kryptonite. They go straight to the waist. Boom. That's it. (laughs) Can't do it. Can't do it. But your waist, my hips. <laughs> <laughs> but they're they're only yeah. around until but, Labor Day if you want to take advantage of those football donuts they have at Krispy Kreme. Yeah, so it's got like a chocolate topping, a white icing, and they even you know to make it even better, they filled it with some sort of cream. So yes, yes, and oh yes. Robin Liz, his morning crew. Toilet paper starting to fly off the shelves, some panic stuff going on. No need to get down that road again. (laughs) But here's what I'm thinking that's made me think this. Hmm. Track with me here. If you could have a life supply of anything, what would it be? (gasps) 800-447-7234. Liz. I know. Ice. Ice. A certain uh, kind of ice. It's not actually a cube. It's more of a square. It's a certain type of ice. I would love to have a lifetime supply, so I never have to go on the hunt for it. Is it the shape of the ice? I mean, what's so special? 
it's sort of the shape of the ice, but it's also hollow on the inside. I'm an ice cruncher, and so it's easy to crunch and just the texture. I don't know. I love it, and so I want a lifetime supply. Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. You kind of do in your fridge. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's those long, like, I don't even know what the shape is, almost like a crescent moon. Don't like it. Too hard. Don't like it. You're talking about your ice. Yes, the ice. Do you have the little squares? Me? Well, my ice is square. Your ice is square, but is it solid or is it hollow? It's solid. Oh, no, I want it ice. hollow. It's ice. No. Well, no, I'm sorry. it's not you ice. Won't like my ice if you guys ever come over to our house. <laughs> well, I'm so sorry. I'll bring my own. Oh, Ron's here at 800 447 7234. What is it for you, man? Life supply of what? What would it be? It would be socks that actually fit. I wear a size 14 and 15 in tennis shoes. And I'm telling you, it's hard to find socks that don't try to cut off circulation or they're so big that they try to slip down into the bottom of my shoe. And that drives me nuts. <laughs> so, yes. Socks that actually fit a lifetime supply, I'd be a happy camper. Dude, and you got big feet, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, Ray says gas, gas for my car. That's a good one, Ray. Yeah, without <laughs> having to pay for it. <laughs> right, exactly. And Tiffany says coffee. Robin Liz, his morning crew. Excuse my ignorance, because mm. I live in ignorance a lot. <laughs> no, so you don't. I just, yeah, I do. Especially with this, I just don't understand, and I don't get it, and I'm seeing since Labor Day is coming up, that for some reason, and I don't understand this, and I think Liz can help, I don't understand why you're not supposed to wear white after Labor Day. Oh, What's this the is, big deal? <laughs> it's like an age-old question, but honestly, I think you'd have to maybe ask a grandmother or great grandmother that question because this thing started like way back 1800s type stuff and what it was is the wealthy people were trying to separate or distance themselves from the not so wealthy people and so there were these fashion or etiquette rules that they placed out there and one of those was to not wear white which is a summertime color I guess is what they were saying after Labor Day. <laughs> okay, the, so listen, it's 2021. Yeah. Um, okay. Most people do not follow this, but there are still some people that will say, oh, you can't wear. I mean, my mother or grandmother maybe would say that. You can't wear white after Labor Day. And I'm like, um, I'll wear white and linen because <laughs> linen is also a thing. Uh -huh. Like after Labor Day, you know, in the fall or the winter, you shouldn't wear linen. But if they're comfortable and they look nice, I mean. Linen? Yeah. Who's because who's wearing their bedding? <laughs> oh my what? goodness. You don't have any linen shirts? Mm, no, that's cotton, the fabric of your life. That's what well, I wear. Well, but linen is a very especially coming from Florida like you uh are, you know, you came from Florida, you would think that yeah. you wore linen a lot around the beach. No, I wear a bathing suit. Okay, even into restaurants, I gotcha. Uh yeah. Although you have to wear a shirt. <laughs> And shoes. Yeah, exactly. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. I wonder, I wonder what Liz would call this, or even what you would call this. It's Rob and Liz, his morning crew on his radio. Here's the ice cream, okay? Let me see if you can name the flavor. Let's see if Liz can do this. The ice cream is vanilla. Mm -hmm. You got that part right? I it's got vanilla. The vanilla. It has midnight cookie crumble swirls, salted caramel. And milk chocolate covered fudge hearts. What would you call that ice cream? A Saturday night. Um, no, I left my heart in cookie crumble because they're always really cheesy sounding. Now, this is Tyra Banks. She owns an ice cream company. She does? I didn't know this. Yeah. And so this flavor happens to be based off of Lionel Richie. Ooh. And it's called All Night Love because I guess you could eat this <laughs> stuff all night. Oh my goodness. Okay, there's a couple of things that are weird with that. Tyra Banks, America's Next Top Model and Supermodel, owns an ice cream. Like, is it one of those that has no sugar or no fat? Oh, I have no idea. I just know it's ice cream. Oh my goodness. Well, I guess not. And if it has milk not chocolate not covered. Yeah, I know. That's why I was just putting that together. But, huh. Okay. 
vanilla midnight cookie is that a is that a thing midnight cookie crumbles what i it must be because when you first started explaining it it sounds like dark chocolate so maybe dark chocolate cookie and then there's like a milk chocolate fudgy heart or something and you got salted caramel and then the milk chocolate covered fudge hearts that's a lot of stuff that's a lot of stuff thrown into some vanilla ice cream